So when we're thinking about our expansion and if we look at our formula on our formula sheet, the term in the middle of that expansion of that formula sheet looks like this and we realize that this is term r plus 1, which is very similar to your formula that you had in your grade 12 pre-calculus formula sheet as well. So that's just part of the binomial expansion. And where that's important is you want to find a term with y to the 12. So if we just look at what this would look like, we don't know which term it is. So we don't know the value of r. We know that the a value is 3x, and it will be to the 9 minus r. And the b value is negative 4y squared, and it will be to the power of r. And so we're going to look at this, and we need to figure out what the value of r is. Sometimes we're going to have to do more math, but this is one that we can go directly from this, and just looking at it, say, I know what r is. Because in this expansion, there's a lot of information. There's information here that's going to affect the coefficients, the number in front. There's information here that's going to affect the exponent of x. And there's information here that's going to affect the exponent of y. What we want is we want something with a y to the 12. Can you see that the only thing that's going to affect the y is in this last section. So what does r have to be to get a y to the 12? r has to be 6. So in this case, there's not a lot of algebraic solutions to do. You see it sort of just by observation. We're going to get into the next example a little bit more mathematics, so I can show you things that we can do for that. But for this one right now, you can ignore the other stuff. You realize that r is 6. Once you have that r is 6, 9 minus 6 is 3. And we can calculate each of these things separately. So we go to our calculator. 9 choose 6 is 84. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Negative 4 to the power of 6 is positive 4,096. And if we multiply 4,096 times 27 times 84, nine two eight nine seven two eight x cubed y to the twelfth. So for this one, just by observation, we could tell. And because r was 6, if you want to say which term it is, this is going to be the seventh term in that expansion. Our next question here asks for the constant term. So first of all, we've got a definition that we need to know. What does it mean to be a constant term? So constant term is a term that has no variables. It's just a number. So if you had 3x plus 5, 5 is a constant term. Now it's not necessarily that the constant term is the last one or the one right in the middle. We don't know where it might happen. In fact, in this expansion, again, since we don't know where it's going to happen, if we wrote out a general term, we'd have 14 choose r our a value is 3x squared. This will be to the 14 minus r. And our b negative 1 over 2x to the 5 to the r. And so depending on different values of r, you're going to get an ex a certain number of x's from this first term and a certain number of x's from this second term. And what we need to happen is we need to have all those x's cancel out so that you end up with 
x to the 0 or no x is left whatsoever. Now, where's the last question? We could just look at it and say r was 6. This one is not so easy to do that because there's x's in both that first set of brackets and the second set of brackets. So what we can do is we can just sort of temporarily temporarily forget about the coefficients. We temporarily forget about all the things that affect numbers in front. 14 choose r. Whatever value r is, that's going to be a number. That's not going to affect my x's. What I'm looking for is when I forget those things, I'm looking for something to be x to the 0. Well, my first term has an x squared to the power of 14 minus r. Does that make sense that my first term is going to have an x to the 28 minus 2r? Does that make sense? And my second term has x's on the bottom. I'm just going to put a 1 on top because I'm going to forget about the negative. I'm going to forget about the 2 because all of those things affect the coefficients. And I would have an x to the 5r on the bottom because that exponent of the r it would go to the 1, it would go to the 2, it would also go to the x to the 5. We can now use our algebra skills with exponents. What's the rule for when you're dividing exponents with the same base? You subtract the exponents. So now on this side, I'll have x to the 28 minus 2r, and I'll subtract. 5r. You don't need to put those brackets there, but I just wanted you to see that I'm subtracting that exponent from the bottom. And that's going to simplify to x to the 28 minus 7r. Now you might right now be able to say, oh, I know what the answer is. But if you wanted to solve it all the way algebraically, can you see that now that your bases are the same, that 0 has to equal 28 minus 7r. You can move the 7r to the other side, divide by 7, and we find out that r is equal to 4. So that means it's going to be the fifth term. There was 15 terms in total. The constant one happens to be the fifth term. And now that we've found out that r is equal to 5, sorry, r is equal to 4, we can actually go through and figure out what the constant term is. Because the question didn't say find out which term was the constant term. The question said, can you find the constant term? So now that we know that r is 4, it's going to be 14 choose 4. A 3x squared to the 14 minus 4, which is 10, and a negative 1 over 2x to the 5 to the 4. So we go to our calculator. 14 choose 4, 1,001. 3 to the power of 10 is 59. 1,049 x to the 20. A negative power 4 will be positive. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. x to the 5 to the power of 4 is x to the 20. So we're seeing what we were hoping for, that our x to the 20s are going to cancel out. And now when we do our 59,000 and 49 times 1,001 divided by 16. We get a decimal. I don't like that decimal. I'm going to change it to a fraction. Oh, it doesn't change to a fraction. If you type into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. I'm just going to multiply the tops together to keep it as a fraction.
There's our constant term. A nice small number. Term with x to the 12, so there's the formula idea. Again, I'm going to ignore the coefficient temporarily. Should have got r is equal to 3, so that's term 4. And then solving for it would have been negative 540 x to the 12. Do you want, does anyone want me to scroll back up to a certain part? Yes? To the solving for r, and then I can scroll it down after. So the second example is, is a way that sometimes they want to check to make sure you understand how the formula works on an IB exam. So they give the formula in sort of an, an interesting way. So that what they've got here, write down the value of n, you would know n is 10, because you know from the formula that it's always n choose r. Write down a and b in terms of p and q. Well, a is the p, b is the 2q. What term is this one? This is term 5. So what would term 6 look like? Term 6 would have r as 5. And so this is an expression for the sixth term. All right, check. So there's the formula with the n that you don't know. Again, we can temporarily forget those coefficients. And then you'll get n is equal to 12. We'll do these last two together. Again, they're a little bit different, and it's an example of being confident in doing the basics, and then what happens when something else is thrown at you that's a little bit different. In this example, we've got an expansion. We've got an extra x squared thrown out in front of us. That's going to be the little part that's a little bit different. And then we have to find k, which is something within it. So it's just all sorts, it's the same kind of idea of question, but it's just worded in a different way. And it's, it could cause you some anxiety or some problems in the question just because it is different. Well, we want to find the constant term. So the first thing that I'm going to think about is when I do the expansion of the 3x squared plus k over x to the 8, I'm going to get nine different terms. Can you visualize that? And those nine different terms are all going to have powers of x. And after I get all nine of those terms, I'm just going to visualize it like this. That's more than nine dots, sorry. There's an x squared still in front. And that x squared would get distributed to all of them. And we want something for all the x's to cancel out. Well, if that's the case, can you see that this question would be the same as find k in the term 1, 6, 1, 2, 8 over x squared And I just forget about that x squared in front. Because if my term had an x squared on the bottom, that x squared in the front would cancel that out, and that, that would be my constant term. So now I'm looking for a term that has x to the negative 2 or an x squared on the bottom. Well, if we write this out, if we write out, we want the term 1628 with an x squared on the bottom, 
And we do the expansion of this, h choose k, because we don't know which term it is. We know that we'll have 3x squared to the 8 minus k, and oh, I shouldn't use k. So this is the first realization as I'm working through it. I'm using k because that is the old grade 12 pre-calculus formula. What is the IB formula letter that they use? R. And not that using k is wrong because you can choose whatever variable you want, but in this question, k was already defined as something else. So we don't want to use the same variable twice. So k over x to the power r. We're going to do the same thing that we always do. We're looking for an x to the minus 2. We're going to temporarily forget about all the coefficients. So here I'm going to have an x to the 16 minus 2r. Here I'm going to have a 1 over x to the r or an x to the minus r. So x to the negative 2 is going to equal x to the 16 minus 3r. Solving for this, Three r is going to equal 18. So we find out that our r value is 6. Now that we found our r value, now we can plug our coefficients all back in. Scroll back up, 16, 128. We know that 16, 128 over x squared should equal Eight choose six. Just look off my paper so I don't have to keep three x squared eight minus six, which will be a two, and k over x to the six. Eight choose six is 28, 9x to the 4, and here we'll have k to the power 6, x to the power 6, and that still is equal to 16, 128 over x squared. Basically at this time, you have over x squared on both sides, because you can see that your x to the 4 and x to the 6 is going to have an over x squared. You could multiply both sides by x squared, and you would get rid of all of your variables whatsoever. And now we're just looking at coefficients. And 28 times 9 is 252. 252 times k to the power of 6. So we take our 16, 128. Divide it by 252, we get 64. Okay. 64 is equal to k to the sixth. You have to take the sixth root of both sides, which means that k could equal either plus or minus 2. It's an involved question, right? It's using all the things that are not necessarily easy to begin with, finding a specific term, having that extra x squared out in the front, so you have to deal with what that means, and then at the end of it, still having to solve for k within the question. So it's just going, there's nothing unfair about it. It's just different and hard. All the stuff that we're doing in here is stuff that we've learned how to do, but just little bits of it that make it a little bit more difficult. The same thing happens with this one. We're not going to go over this one right now. You can try it on your own, but they get you to expand completely x minus 2 to the 4 and simplify it. So I'll write it out.
no, that's not going to be right. I'm trying to do it in my head. There's Pascal's triangle plus. Okay, so I might m be making some mental math mistakes in here as I go. If I do, sorry. But I believe that that's the expansion. If you take that expansion in part B, they're wanting to find the term with x cubed. If you had, do it in a different color, a 3x plus 4 in front. Now, if you wanted to expand this completely, that means that this 3x is going to get multiplied by each one, right? And this 4 is going to get multiplied by each one. That's a lot of arrows. And that would take a lot of time to do all of it. So instead of doing all of it, how do I find which ones are going to have an x cubed? Change my arrow color here. If I multiply a 3x by the 24x squared, can you see that that one will give me 72x cubed? And if I multiply my 4 by my negative 8x cubed, that'll give me negative 32. Those will be the only ways that I can get an x cubed with all those arrows. And so now that's hoping I didn't make a mental math error in that expansion. But that would that's the concept. That's the idea for how you would go about doing this question. And then the last, it's not in your notes, I just want to show it to you as a challenge. This is from the November exam in 2015. If you want to write it down, I, I, I'd like to see what the world results were on this. I don't know if they give statistics. Like the world results on this question were 18% or something catastrophic. So this was an extremely difficult question. I might be generous in saying that the world results were 18%. Although sometimes in IB marking, they don't they can have scores that you get the right kind of idea. And you'll get two or three out of seven. And then after that, you're going to get stuck. So I'll leave this one as a challenge. And what I wanted to do for the last 10 minutes.